Star Trek The Next Generation series review. Eighty years after the original Enterprise went out, a new ship, new flagship for the Federation, also named the Enterprise, a decision which has angered the fan base significantly, is launched out into space again to explore and mediate. This ship is considerably larger than the old one. It houses several thousand people, not only crew members but also their families and this of course allows for new story opportunities where entire families can indeed be on the ship. It is led this time by Captain Jean-Luc Picard, a Frenchman played by a Brit. And his ancestry may lead some to suggest that that's why they're so much more pacifist this time around, but I'm not one of those people. Also on the, among the crew are Worf, a Klingon that might confuse people slightly because they were pretty unilaterally, you know, decidedly the bad guys last time around, but he's part of the crew and accepted, and it's not that he represses his culture, although he doesn't exactly, you know, bring it to the, bri to the bridge either. This one is very much about room for everyone. Some would call it downright socialist. And we also have Counselor Troy, the ship psychologist, who is also somewhat of an empath and, you know, can tell what the intentions of someone might be, which is always good in negotiations. She also has an impossible to determine accent. And this shows Spock, for lack of a better term. This shows answer to a character that isn't quite human and has some... lacks something that makes us human and thus struggles with this data. He is an android and he desperately yearns to be human. And although he can mimic aspects of humanity that machines don't possess, he can never quite... It's an ongoing struggle for him to become more like a human. The show again explores many philosophical ideas and sign science fiction style concepts. Again, there are themes of fiction versus, versus reality, especially explored through the new holodeck which, holodeck, which is essentially a playground where, you know, you can imagine anything programmed into the computer and, you know, go experience it. And it certainly won't ever malfunction and thus create stories. The themes of culture, you know, religion, spirituality, and, you know, of accepting different cultures very much explored. This one is less... If the first one was a bit of a western set in space, this one is kind of more... Not sure what genre exactly I'd put it at, but it's much more peaceful. There's much less fighting and, you know, much more negotiating. With that said, there are still some rather engaging conflicts. One character that should also be mentioned is Commander Riker, who is number one to the captain. No toilet humor jokes, please. He's the second in command and since he is younger and 
has hair, he's the one who goes down on the planets and actually does the action type stuff, usually. And perhaps also, I should mention, Wesley, who nobody really likes. He's supposed to be the whiz kid and at the same time sort of this kid that you know, the young people watching the show are supposed to relate to, but he's a genius, so I'm not sure how we're supposed to relate to him exactly, but he sort of goes back and forth between asking questions to make sure that, you know, the audience are aware of what's going on, you know, because the explanations, the answers he gets are the explanations for how something's working or such, and between being this, you know, complete genius kid. Again, the show is very much about the characters, just as with the first show. And any action or chasing or anything of the sort is kind of takes a backseat. You know, it's all it's usually more character driven, and sometimes there are you know, and there are conflicts, and often quite interesting ones. This is more of an ensemble show than the original was, and we spend time on the various characters, you know, really developing them. This is part of why the movies with this cast, part of why they usually failed, they tended to focus on some of the more popular characters and didn't leave enough time for the rest of the cast, but anyway. And the acting is really good. They also do have some pretty good guest stars. The effects have improved, although there are still sometimes some reused stuff, but this time you can always tell what is supposed to be going on. There are some very interesting designs. Granted, the aliens do still tend to be humanoid, but Let's be honest, part of that is, it's easier to relate to something that looks mostly human. It's, you know, just like, oh look, he's got a little bridge on his nose or something. Instead of, oh, how can we relate to this, you know, shapeless thing that is maybe partially invisible or something. And... The budget is higher, or at least the quality of the effects is, you know, higher. The show does take a couple of seasons to completely find its ground, as I've heard is also the case with later Star Trek incarnations. Basically the first three seasons or so, it's still just trying to figure out its voice, exactly what it wants to be, so pretty much just stick through those and it gets much better once you're through them. would also say that the effects do get better and the cinematography gets better, I believe with the second season or maybe the third. So again, you know, if the first one really doesn't look that impressive to you, just stick with it. And we are introduced to some of the more compelling alien races in this particular Star Trek series. And I refuse to give any details away about that. That is definitely for the viewer to discover for himself or herself or itself. Also, this one, much like the first, the continuity is very, with some exceptions, there isn't that much continuity. Basically, you can dip in and out, it's just, you can watch certain episodes, you can watch without really having watched any of the rest of it, and others, you'll just have to watch a couple of episodes to figure out what the basic, you know, what's essentially going on in the show, and there are some things that they bring back. 
But with a lot of the episodes, you can just watch just that one or just those few and basically get the impact without, I mean not the impact, but you'll get the gist of what is going on and it won't necessarily really spoil something. They do tend to be, you know, closed little stories in the episode, so there isn't that much to miss out on or to know about long before you actually get there in the show. The seasons do vary some in quality, but they do all tend to be quite good. And if you like the basic setup, if you like, you know, the stories, then yeah, you'll want to stick with it, I'd say. It never really gets into a real slump where, you know, where none of the episodes are good. And obviously also, some episodes you're gonna like more than others. It depends on what themes and ideas interest you most about the show. It's very loose in letting itself explore very different things in the different episodes. It doesn't lock itself into any one. You know, the only constants are the main characters and the basic premise of the show, this big ship traveling through space, you know, other than that. Especially with the addition of the holodeck, they can really explore very different things. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.